Um, yeah, take a look around. Beautiful Black Canyon, part of the Santa Fe National Forest. My only purpose is to educate and open awareness to your possible level of self-happiness. But anyhow, on with the video, enough of the crazy stuff. Um, I have below me a list of a few questions that came in through email over the last five, maybe six months. Time flies, it's hard to tell. It's hard to believe it's already the first week, end of the first week of August. Where does it go, man? Well, I tell you, when you're at 14 days at each park, or even 10 days, if you get a little stir-crazy, some probably get stir-crazy after three or five, time goes by quick. That's two campsites a month, and each month flies by. So anyhow, um, on with the first question. Is, what is your favorite place and why? Well, that changes. But each time it changes, I find better places. And so far, it's been Hype Memorial State Park until I came here at this national, this park inside National Forest. Note to everyone, just because it's a national forest doesn't mean it's always going to be free. There are campsites in the national forest that you do have to pay for. Um, this one's $10 a night. Uh, but if you're on public lands and not a developed campsite such as this and this isn't really what some people would call developed i mean you have a fire ring you have a table it's hard to do this because i'm not seeing the camera but anyhow um and those places are somewhat close together but you know it was quieter here last night than other places i've been but yet you're i don't want to say packed but you're closer to each other here so and why why is this my favorite place Get off my nose fly. Um, because I like the pine, I like the green, I like the breezes and the cooler temperatures, which is why I came up to up here in the higher elevations, is because it was going to be more wooded, the smell of the pine, the afternoon or evening gentle rainfall that comes down. Uh, this is the place for me to be through the summer. I mean, there's no question about that. All right, simple enough. Favorite place and why? Um, was it hard to start this lifestyle? Not for me. My vehicle was already paid for, and I had it for 14 years at the time, maybe 15. I bought my vehicle in 2002, already paid for. was nothing to catch back up on the maintenance schedule. Um, so that part of it was easy because I already had my vehicle, and I was already debt-free. That Also, I almost say I don't know how you could start this lifestyle unless you are debt-free. If you got credit cards, student loans, car payments, it's going to be tougher. My cost of living, which is not a question, but is part of this one, is starting your, this lifestyle. Was it hard to start this lifestyle? Um, it was the decision to do so was overwhelming. But by the second day, and if you go back to like my first video, or the second video after I left the house. Um, there's a Revelations video. And that's really after that second or third day when everything just lifted off me. I thought I had so much stress, but when I talked to other people, they had so much more stress. Usually debt. Debt will do it. Or family issues. It's a good way of escaping all that. So for me, it was really easy, but I can't speak for everybody. Just like this lifestyle isn't for everyone. Um, but emotionally, it was a little bit difficult. What's with this fly on my nose? That's craziness, isn't it? Anyhow. All right, go away, fly. Shoe fly, don't bother me. For real. Okay, uh, next one. What are the difficult obstacles since you started? Um, you know, the anxieties, because actually the first, the most difficult obstacle was my anxiety of finding the next site. Even though I had resources like freecampsites.net and a book that I had bought on Amazon that helped a little bit, I didn't know where I was going or anything about anything. I mean, 
I watched some videos for about a year, not even knowing I was going to go into this lifestyle, and that helped prepare me a little bit. But the anxiety of finding a new place, um, saying goodbye to decent people that you've met, thinking you'll never meet good people again like that. But as soon as you get camped at the next site, when you're starting out within the first 24 hours, you start coming out of your shell. I do. Um, I can't speak for everybody. Everybody's different. But that was really my obstacle. Oh, for me, actually, I did have a difficult obstacle, which was catching up on maintenance schedule on my vehicle. But considering my housing was $750, $800 a month, it wasn't that big of a deal to put four or 500 a month into my vehicle to catch back up on the maintenance schedule. And there were some pretty expensive things they had to catch back up on, being that it was 110,000 miles old at the time. But everybody's obstacles are going to be different. Okay, here's an important question somebody asked. Is it hard to travel with a cat? I have a cat, but she cries and is scared to be in the vehicle. That can be overcome. It's easier if you have a little kitten and that's the only life she knows. But for me, my cat at the time was a 12-year-old senior that I had since birth. And she had traveled a few times to the point where she didn't cry. But then after being in a house and being stationary for years and not taking her out to a park uh, afternoon, um, that made it difficult. It was like starting all over for her. So what I did the last two weeks before my destined departure date, I, I would bring her to a park for an afternoon. And sometimes all we did was sit in the van. But what what matters to felines is that motion of moving. When you're parked, it's no big deal. But when you're moving, that rolling motion, that kind of freaks them out at first. And if you listen to my very first video, that was at San Isabel National Forest. I forget the name of the campsite. Eagle Creek? I don't know. Um, at San Isabel, the very first video, and I think it's labeled first video, you can hear Mika crying in the background. And it wasn't hurting her, it was just her scared, it was a scared cry. And it's only in that first video. Um, that was a long ride that day, about 45 to 50 minutes, and everything was all different to her. And it took her a day to adjust to before she'd come out of the van and she felt free again, like a cat should. Always keep your cat on a leash and a collar, because they will wander. If you have a male cat, there's studies in that were done in Europe that show that female cats only wander, if feral female cats only wander about a block, but feral male cats will tend to wander three to five block range. So if you have a male cat, it's going to be more difficult. Um, when we were at Hyde National Forest, I'm sorry, Hyde Memorial Park, State Park, she immediately, because it was our third time there, she just, she loves it there. And it gets to the point where 4.30 in the morning, two or three hours, two hours before the sun comes up, she's crying and wanting to go out and scratching at the vinyl on the door. Um, because she wants to be out. And she has fun chasing the chipmunks around. But, you know, once we get to a new location, she settles down. She's a little fearful to come out. It takes her a day, day and a half to get used to it again. And then she gets like that again. But, I mean, if you have a pet, I'm a, I'm a firm believer of pets for life. You shouldn't have a pet unless you plan on keeping it for life. Because pets have emotional attachment disorder. If you abandon your pet or give it away to somebody else and you think it's a good home, that pet's still going to miss you, period. All there is to it. And you're causing it harm. It's no different if you're attached to an uh, opposite-sex lover for many years and just like that they abandon you. You know, you're going to feel that emotional detachment disorder, that abandonment, that pain. Pets feel the same thing. So, first off, if you have a pet, don't get away because you're going to move or this, that, or the other reason. That's wrong. It causes the pet more harm. Um, and the cat will get used to it. And you're going to have to deal with cleaning the litter box. 
I don't know about everybody else, but for me, I clean it immediately as soon as she's done using it, put it in a bag, wrap it up, tie it up, and bring it to the garbage, even if it's 2.30 in the morning. That's just the way it is. But yeah, if you have a cat and she cries and is scared to be in the vehicle, she will overcome it. Okay. All right. Another question we got is, um, how does one do this lifestyle successfully? Do research. Research like crazy. That's what I did before I knew I was going to get into this lifestyle. Do research. Do tons of research. Find your favorite person on YouTube that you like the personality of. Um, but find somebody that you like, a personality that you like, that you jive with, you know, and, um, follow their tips. Do your research on tips for how to keep clean. I mean, up here there isn't a shower nearby unless you go downtown to a community center, down into town. Um, learn what you fear most and research those things to alleviate those fears. And before I left, actually, I practiced in the backyard for a week. Sure, I cheated because I had a 120-volt line out to the truck. I had different things, but figure out what you need and what you don't need and what you think you need that you really don't. Just do your research. Um, I think that's it for the questions. Yeah. All right. Well, anyhow, I just thought I'd throw that in there quickly. And I hope you guys are having a great one. Take care. If you do have any other questions about anything on .com or put them on the comments in here. And I don't have connectivity too, too often, but when I do, I'll write them down and I'll get back to you. And I'll keep your name private unless you want your name to be disclosed. That's fine, too. But take care, everybody. Have fun. And enjoy. And I hope everybody has an awesome week and weekend and life. I hope you're happy. I hope you spread happiness to others. And uh, get to what it takes so you have peace within your spirit and soul. Because that's really what matters. The mind, body, spirit, and soul all works together with each other. You can't just have one. And everything in the universe remains equal. So do what it takes to, to get there. And you'll be a better person. All right. Take care, peoples. Have a good one. Bye.